All right, hello, Face It fans. We're here for some EMEA coverage. We're going to be looking at Peps versus Twisted Minds. That happened uh, a couple of days ago. I think this is a game a lot of people are really interested in because EMEA has really sorted itself into a top five, a top five, including Peps and TM. So the power rankings between that top five, while it might be a, fair to say SSG and Ents probably find themselves at the top, how you divide the other teams has been a big question. So this is a little bit of a scuffed fixture because... Crook wasn't available, so Johan played this match. And also Quart, or not Quart, sorry, Yubi wasn't available for this, so Lubda had to come in as well. So uh, a few roster differences on both sides. I, I can talk you through the map draft they had. So Peps banned Busan, Twisted Minds banned Oasis, and Samoa was Peps pick. Then for the hybrid, Twisted Minds banned Midtown, Peps banned Pariso, and Hollywood was Twisted Minds pick. And then for the third map, Peps banned Rialto, Twisted Minds banned Shimbali. And Route 66 was the pick by Peps. So interesting that Peps leaned away from the dive on the hybrid, wanting to ban Parisio, but then leaned to Route 66. So maybe they have something different planned on Route 66. We have seen a fair amount of Malga being used on Route 66. So maybe that's the direction they've taken. I think it's fair to say for both teams and where every team in the world right now, there's been a bit of a meta shift post Dallas. The emergence or the re-emergence of Malga has shifted a lot of things. And alongside this, it's really shifted a lot of the DPS picks as well. We're seeing way more Pharah, way more Genji, way more Venture, which is obviously causing DPS players to flex around a lot. So obviously, Lubta coming in for Twisted Minds here might not be the worst thing in the world, considering he's going to get to play Pharah, and Lubta is very good on no type of heroes. So it might work out for him. We'll have to wait and see. I can take us into the, into the match. There we go. So Peps on your left. Twisted Minds. On your right. We'll start on Samoa Beach. As you can see, Lubder in, Yoham in. So I think on paper, it feels like Peps have always been, or have really started to become the fifth place team. They beat the teams below them, lose to the teams above them here. So this is a good chance again for Peps to prove they're higher up in that top five rankings and not just the tier break team. Twisted Minds, on the other hand, have had some pretty bad losses. I think, to some of the other teams like SSG and Ents. They are competitive maps, but they got 2 0 in both of them. And we'll start here on Samoa. Malga, Mira, Lubda on Farah, Naga on Genji. So do you actually go to lock the Ash here as well? Just playing with their bat Ash in the back here. Tread holding this right hand side. Lubda's going to take the coast angle, just trying to put a lot of early damage down. Happy just to connect these rockets from across the map. Spam onto Tread, keeps him low. Peaks there from Lubter. He is quite low. Needs topping up here from Vigilante. Will be okay as Keller makes the aggressive move. Loses a lot of health, so has to run out of there. Tread's going to try and keep that health advantage. I mean, can't pocket Kellen through it here. Lubter just trying to play more of a sniper farrow here, but will be forced out. It was really in the front line they lost that one. So hard on Malga sometimes because you're super tanky and super hard to kill, but if you take that early damage, it's really hard to get it back up because you're... You're just a big guy who can't really dodge all that much. So, early window coming out for Yoham on the retake here. Obviously, Vigilante is on Kiri, so a little bit slower on that Kiri ult. Kellen's going to peek earlier onto Tread here, but just have to peek into the Ash so Zodio and Yoham can push Kellen back. And Lux is actually going to get caught on the flank here, so the window and lamp is dropped. They force Twisted Minds all the way out. I don't think they can actually get any more kills, so the window doesn't get that much that they weren't already getting from that Lux to pick. We want to keep walking forward, though, not letting Kellen reset his health. Quartz is going to slide out as well. That might be all Peps can get for now, but are we happy with that? Nagra is 1 HP, squeaks his way out of that one. And they'll find themselves resetting on point. Retake that. Oh, okay. A deflected boot. A deflected boot. Nagra out playing Lubta here. And this retake is going to go nowhere. Dynamite on top of Kellen. They're going to have to walk back. Not seen a deflected boot kill before, but there it is. Crispy's going to get staggered out too, so Peps remain in full control. They keep hold of their entire old bank. Obviously, the map's gone on long enough now that Twisted Minds actually have all their ults coming back as well. So it could be a Kitsune rush to start. They should win the cage straight here if they can find it. So Tread probably can't really use the, use the cage. Has to try and outplay this, play a bit of a slower fight. We're going to see them retake through the inside path, trying to push them in. And Yoam's going to take a big rocket behind, slam on the top. Bob used defensively, but just onto point. And Lubta's got so much value on this other side. They beat over top. They focus them down on point. 
Kellen can just burn through Trent's health, and now we'll burn through Bob's health as well. So he was managed to find a couple of trades here, actually, and he's not quite done yet. He's still got this big, long angle, and no one's really able to clear him out. Dink onto Vigilante. He's low. Takes care of Vigilante. Quartz has popped the overclock now. Trying to find the angle on him. Will find it. Just a body shot, though. They have got the flip back here, Twisted Minds, but so he'll keep in this powerful angle. Now the beat push comes in. They've got the cage over the top as well. Cage back is available. Counter cage comes through. They can't really be involved in this. It's going to be a barrage in the cage, which means Twisted Minds can win that one, but they need to get back to point quickly. They'll secure that one. They win the cage trade. They have the barrage to throw in. And Twisted Minds do find themselves on top. For now, at least. But it was, they used everything in the course of that sort of two-part fight. Which means it's going to be a window advantage for Johan coming back here. Only one fight Peps need to win. So a chance to convert this one here. And Johan actually finds the course pick again. Just an early pick in these fights. Causing TM all sorts of problems. But be forced back. Now they can take the trade. Window can be dropped in this Malga trade if they want it. Treads lost it. But they know the window's coming. So Kellen has to give the space regardless. But you can use this window to flip a point. I think Lupta can get the first touch. Crispy will do it actually. TP over to Kellen now. They have to repeat onto point sooner or later. But this Bob is coming up soon from Zodial. Kellen's going to swap to the opposite side of point. Crispy will join him. They're just trying to play through point here. But Zodial nearly has that Bob. 83% as he swings right hand side. They're trying to force pressure on it. It's Naga making the aggressive move. All the way down onto this Farah. They don't. It doesn't work out though. They lose tread while they do this as well. Twisted Mind's able to stay in control of a point. We'll flip it back. Looked her in a difficult battle with this Ash, but he's got Kiri support. And there we go. And that works out there. It looked like they were going to be able to get it. If they were making a big aggressive move of a Farah there, but Lupta held his own. And now Twisted Minds in control. They have the Bob that can use to deal with point, but double support. They want to go early here. Peps are going to try and run away from it. And they have run away from it. They've just left Twisted Minds for dead. Bob on the point to force it now. Crispy does have B. Quartz has Pulse. Lupta nearly has that barrage. They can just take the B engage here. Naga doesn't quite have Blade yet. Lupta's making that aggressive move. The B barrage is in. The lamp is good. The deflex helps, but they still just kill through everything. The combination is too much. Lupta does the damage. Cage on point. Just for show from Kellen at the end. And Twisted Minds, they did get the flip, which caused themselves problems. Which means that wasn't actually last fight. Which means the Beat Blade coming back now. Zodi was going to go Tracer to help with a touch. Really difficult. Wait, why did Ke Wait, It wasn't last fight at all. Kellen just threw with that cage, didn't he? Oh no, they stop FD God touching. Can we get one more touch? Naga's going to go for it. Has to use all these cooldowns, though. Wants to blade if he can, Naga, but he's low on everything. He's going to try and make it work anyway. Looking for a target. Can't find it, but Lucio's got away. Boop one more time. Nothing with the blade. They're going to cage on point. They turn their attention to Kellen. It might be turnable yet for Peps. Tread will die in the cage. It's now just a dogfight on point. Zodial versus Quartz. Farrow Rocket's coming over top, though, and Lupta's going to try to connect there. Still getting pocketed by Vigilante as his beat comes in so they can keep everyone alive. Spawn's coming back for both teams. Fast Hero is going to be the choice. And it's a C9! It's a C9! No, it felt like Vigilante and Lupta had that. They had it! Lupta was doing so much in these dogfights. I'm pretty sure he would have won that 2v2. I mean, it would have got maybe a bit more messy with respawns and stuff. And you think, oh, the C9, the Kellen Cage, uh, all these things that could have been avoided. All that things that could have been avoided. When it was such a close fight. But Peps are going to take the first one. Peps are going to take the first round as we move on to Volcano. Now, Volcano is an even more compact map. Very narrow choke, so no surprise we're going to see more of a Malga here. Looks like Peps are going to lean into Venture Genji here. So we can take a look at Zodial. Obviously, we saw Proper able to flex over onto the Genji, allowing Stalker to play Venture so they could play that double flex composition. In EMEA, we've not seen too many hitscan DPSs making that swap so far. Probably Seeker's one we've seen make it most, and Zodial's on the early flank here. Drill dash in, will get booped up actually, just managed to get back into the ground and make kill Quartz in the meantime. And that's the difficulty in this, in this type of mirror when the other team has double flex. Is you can deal with one threat, but the other one comes for you. But TM stabilized. Now they can push back onto Tread. 
Should be able to overwhelm him here. Peps do get the early flip, which will be annoying for TM to deal with. But they're pushing him all the way back. Treadle used for cardiac overdrive. They're trying to clear Johan out first here. Johan forced a TP back. Twisted Minds have control of the point. They've captured it. They're in control. No ults just yet. Johan's and Tread slightly ahead on their ults. Reaper's going to come in. Again, looked at a menace in the air. Relatively free, obviously, against the Venture Genji. Can just keep laying this damage in. They've cleared Zodial back to the team for now, Twisted Minds. And Lupta's going to peek again on his left-hand side. Every rocket so deadly. Pressure onto Tread. And Lupta will take the Mega and reset. Twisted Minds in no rush as Johan gets up to Kyriol, which could be the go. But Johan's awfully low as he does this. Has to suit himself in. Still low underneath if Lupta can find the rocket. Kellen's going to counter pin. Gets a big trade slam. And Lupta is still just above. Uncontested Barrage. It only gets one, but it does so much damage. And the rest of TM are able to get the cleanup. Kitsune rushed there. It was sort of forced. It was awkward timing. Johan was low as he did it. They didn't deal with... They weren't... Well, they didn't really deal with Lubza at all. They've not really dealt with Lubza at all on this map so far. They were struggling to deal with him on beach as well. Obviously, Twisted Minds without Yubi, you feel like would be a much easier team to take down. But so far, it's not been the case. Retaken now, they have beat, they have caged. Tread's gonna come in, cage is dropped, counter cage comes through, beat over top. Later beat from FD God, Vigilante has the Kitsune rush foul, should just favor Twisted Minds, and there's for High Noon. You gotta be careful when you choose to get in a cage fight, because if the other team has more ults, something like that can just happen. But we're coming back with DPS ults, and Twisted Minds don't have a great answer for this, so they're gonna try and hold forward. If they can get one of these ults out early, they'll be happy. Nagas had to use his cooldowns to rotate though, and Twisted Minds gonna reposition back to point now as Peps try and out-rotate them. We see Zodial making the flank move again. Rocket onto Zodial. Awfully low. Drill dash to regroup with the team. Zodial does manage to help him get the flip here. They were trying to bait out a null, and now the blade comes through looking for the Pharah, but Lipta's gonna slip away from that one. Turns her attention to Crispy. Crispy's in so much trouble. They do catch Crispy. Disengage, not quite good enough from Twister's Minds, but they trade it for FD so they can walk back up. Johan has Kitsune Rush, and there's that Tectonic Shock. Just trying to focus down the Malga here. Look, just going to catch some of it as well. They're all quite low on the Twister's Mind side. Suzu to keep Quartz up. Desperate for heals right now, but Zodial still barreling down, burrowing underneath them. And will force Twister's Minds back out at the choke. Kitsune rushes a piece now. Slightly closer beat for Crispy. Maybe the most important one is that barrage for Lubta. Naga has to try and keep his deflect. Needs to try and mark for Farah in this fight. Oh, wow. Just find Zodial. Lubta will take the free kill. No messing around from Lubta. And now they have player advantage on point. Kitsune rushes will be traded. But Lubta is just all over Johan. Another high noon comes through from Quartz. Will turn his attention to Tread. Chasing him down underneath. No escape for Peps. Twist his mind's in full control. Zodial can get one more touch. They're going to deny FD God doing it. But there's not really a way. Has to recall immediately near Zodial. Trying to find another way through. This cage from Kellen is a safe cage. This one's okay, Kellen. This one's okay. And Twisted Mind's tied up one to one. We move over to downtown now. Honestly, one of the more open maps. You could play Dive if you really want. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a, a Mauga type of match this one. Seeing Zodial move to the cast now instead of the Venture. Expect we'll see very few changes from Twisted Minds. Obviously more than happy to put Quartz on Cass. More than happy to put Lubter on Farah. And it's been working. It's been working. Again, a Kiri for the side of Twisted Minds, but Bap this time from Johan. So generally a bit more damage, a bit more healing in the neutral. Thank you Wilder for the Prime as well. As both teams are going to roll out opposite sides, Twisted Minds will lock themselves down in this room. Start trying to force point. Boop onto the high ground, making it hard. And Lub just got so much damage already. These rockets just connect every single time. And it's making Pep's life an absolute nightmare. They try and make a move onto point. But Kellen with the Cardiac Overdrive will match Tread. Tread wants to keep going aggressive with it though. Slam onto Quartz is good. And Zodial swung at the same time. They've lamped Tread in. Tread will die for it. But all the space for Naga and Zodial to walk forward. They've got crucial picks. And Naga's looking for more inside. Still has to care for Farah. 
We'll be chased out, but Peps now have map control. They're able to clean this one up. Tread finds the aggressive move, and even though it costs him his life, the follow-up is there. Zodi will flank through the right-hand side at the same time. And now Zodi will sit in pretty close to this high noon, and they're pretty close to this window. Crispy's beat is quicker, though, so... Crucial to keep an eye on that. So he was going to swing round away. Tread's lost so much health. They have to lap Tread. FD God's going to die as well. So definitely not get into the speed. They're going to window back now. The headshot's good. Zodio might be able to turn it. Magnetic grade through as well. They're so low on the side of Peps. But they're still peeking a little bit with the window. They've done so much damage. But no kills other than that early Lucio pick. And that Lucio will be back fast now. On to Kellen. But Farah coming in. Has to care the barrage. Can't find the connect in time. But they don't need trade one for one, so it's not the end of the world for Peps. They can lap Tread onto point again. He survived this entire time, and the beat comes in. But the later beat from FT God, everyone will live. Not a good beat from Twisted Minds. No way to turn with that fight when they also have beat. The Malga advantage is too much. Kellen's respawned and he's back now, but it's been a very expensive way to not cap the point. But that Johan pick might just turn it yet. Kellen wants to go forward. Blade to try and turn it from Naga. Sodio's got the high noon as well. They found two kills. It might be enough. Looking for the Lucio now. Crispy's just sorting out. But remember, Twisted Minds never flip the point. They never flip a point. So this is a disaster for them, economically speaking. We're going to have Cage versus Cage as we come back into this next one. Quartz is going to have High Noon. So High Noon can be quite effective against Cage because you can just stand outside for Cage, charge up a load of heads, and break the enemy Cage quite quickly in this Cage trade. <coughs> so if you're Peps, you don't necessarily want to take this trade head on. They come in round. Early pressure onto Lubda. They'll keep marking back. Cage now comes in onto Kellen. Counter. Cage comes out. Vigilante will get into it. They've killed FD God behind that. High noon is going. Could be pressure. Deflect comes in from Naga. Still trying to go. And they kill Quartz, importantly. It's winnable now. Lubda is still alive. Kellen's with him. The Malga advantage should be too much. Lubda will chase down one. And now they can deal with the remaining threats. Crispy and Lubda cleaning these ones up. They'll finally get the flip. Took him 99%. Both support tops in the hand of Twisted Finds as well. So a great chance. So they have to win every fight from here, but they've got the ult with which to do it. They'll regroup on point. Only a window coming back for Pep. So if they can window, try and disengage one of the ults that comes back from Twisted Minds. Hard to take a very direct fight here. They're going to go from inside, but Kellen's going to meet him there. Oh, Crispy's going to get caught. Crispy gets dashed on. Will be okay. Window comes through. Kitsune runs. They're looking to go through. Lupta's up behind him now. Nearly has that barrage. The barrage is massive. Surely it puts so much damage on. They can convert the tread kill. It's still a dogfight, though. Just Vigilante and Kellen. It's a 2v3. They lost so many people during that Kitsune rush somehow. Kellen now has to stall this point out. Desperate for... He's respawns to come through. The Cardiac Overdrive will buy him some time. That resource has been bled out now, so Kellen has to be careful. Lubda is now back and will chase Yoham out. Yoham down to half. A regroup now, but FD God has beat. Naga has blade. Crispy has to get this beat off. They're going to be engaged, actually, here. So if Peps can lift this, they can beat back. Here comes the high noon. They don't cancel it. Kellen will die for this. Surely the cage comes through. But the damage has been done. They forced the beat engage there. But it was such a difficult fight to force a beat engaged because they had beat back. They had blade back. They had the high noon. A straightforward one at the end for Peps to win that one. Just a big ult advantage. A big ult advantage. And a relatively easy confirm. So we can take a look at the second map now. So we're moving to Hollywood. The first map. The first map, I think, really could have gone Twisted Mind's way. I think that, especially that beach, they could have won. It's been a neck and neck Malga mirror so far. I think Lubda's actually looks really good. Obviously, if you have to replace Yubi in a team, or you have to come in to cover for Yubi. A lot of pressure on you, right, in terms of what Yubi does in terms of the leading of the team, his ability in game as well. But I thought Lubda's played really well. Obviously, very good at Farah, a big comfort pick for him. As well as obviously a very good hero in this current meta. So I think Lubda's looked really good so far. And I imagine he'll keep playing Farah and keep causing Peps all of these problems. Johan's looked a little bit ropey on the Kiri at times here. Looked better on the bat. But it's going to be... Hog initially from Tread just to see if he can catch anything with the TP. And then we're going to get a Malga Mirror. 
Now, if you check your history textbooks and you uh, you flip it all the way to page 72, you might find some historical Naga Farah performances. And he was always a monster on the Farah. We've been singing Lubta's praises so far, but this has always been one of Naga's best heroes. We've not seen it a lot as Farah's not really been in the meta. We can take a little peep at Naga here as he takes this aggressive angle on the right-hand side. Camp in that doorway in case anyone wants to peek him. Waiting for his team to make the next move. We'll try and come through now. Eyes on that Farah. Just taking a bit of a sniper duel right now as the Malgus will trade on point. There it comes. One rocket good. Two rocket goods. Rail misses as well. Naga swapping to this left-hand side. Might go and try and go over the roof at one point. Boot out of position as well. Has to care because Quartz has the rail, but Zodi will find that one. But Boot dislodges him. Good timing between the Pep's DPS. And now Naga can get on top. Looking for the battle with Lupta. Doesn't connect anything and will be forced back. They've lost Zodi one point as well, but... Oh, Crispy's in trouble. Doesn't want to be in there. Now the... Now the Kiri will fall too. And they should be able to finish this one up here. Raining damage down from above. And really, it was all about that DPS combo. The boot by Naga, the finish by Zodial to deal with Quartz. As soon as you have that, the nature of these Malga mirrors, it is very head-to-head. -head. You're just shooting the front line a lot. You're just trying to trade damage with that HP trade. But if you have a hit scan and they don't have a hit scan, you're going to be in a pretty good position. And well, if you have a Farrah and they don't have a Farrah, you're going to be in a pretty good position in this fight as well. So free can't push for Peps initially here. Always tricky on some of these high ground maps when you're playing... Something like a Malga, something that doesn't have a vertical movement ability. Early Barrage comes through actually from Naga here. Lots of pressure on. Beat comes back out from Crispy. FD God has it too as the Barrage comes, but Peps are out of here. The Kitsune Rush as well. They're going to beat back in. They don't even need to go in, Peps. They probably didn't even need to beat back, honestly, but they'll just wait this one out. Now they have a chance to regroup, but Kenny keeps pushing with that Kitsune Rush. It felt like there was a chance for Peps to disengage here, and it felt like there was a. felt like FD God beat it. They wanted to go in and contest it, but the rest of Peps were quite happy to wait outside. So they lose that double support ult trade, and we find ourselves in a cage v cage situation. High noons coming up. Cart's about halfway. Interested to see how they choose to take in this fight. It's a little bit of an awkward one to engage with on cage. And high noon. Hard to get a high noon in a decent position here with a high ground. But Boop will help him though. Only knocks down Crispy, so not the end of the world for Twister's mind, so you can regroup up here quickly. And Pep's trying to figure out their next move. They do nearly have this barrage. Can look to maybe force point, and you can see Naga is sneaking around the flank. Wants to find that opportunity. Boop off to Kellen, but doesn't knock him off though. They're trying to come up the high ground. Look to spot it though, so they're all aware. Cage onto Kellen. Twisted Minds have to come and try and help Barrage over the top. There's no help to be had. They try to. They just. They just sacrificed him. Twisted Minds just sacrificed Kellen. And if anything, Peps have used High Noon, Barrage, and Cage to kill a single man. And they got their man, sure, but now the ult advantage is going to swing massively in favour of Twisted Mind. They have everything coming back with. They'll poke Tread off of this high ground. We'll take a while to top him up. Meanwhile, Kellen will focus down point. Nagas actually just going to get caught as well. Pep seemed unsure what their next move should be. And we'll find themselves a player down. And now Twisted Mind's keen to take the high ground back. They have a sort of hold on to push for a bit. There is that Kitsune Rush. But no, it doesn't make it all the way up. It's on the wrong level. A disaster from Johan. But they get the look to kill anyway. Kellen's going to cage. But Peps are just standing outside for cage. They'll disengage this one for free. Who wants alt value anyway? Not me. So FD God's going to have beat. Crispy has it to match. Still an overwhelming advantage for Twisted Minds here as Peps try and play through point. They'll drop to meet him now, and it looks like Peps are going to try and rotate to the high ground here. Quartz is still waiting up there. He's alone, though, so has to drop. Peps have now negotiated themselves for high ground to play with, but they've lost their Farrah again. Lubta and Crispy able to pounce on that one, so Peps will slow it down one more time. And Twisted Minds want to take the high ground back. They're coming back up. Slam on top. Hiding in the back from Zodial, so they can just disengage this one. Kellen's going to take a chunk of damage, but we'll be okay. Twisted Minds get out of that one for free. Nagar has returned on the Genji too. They're going to poke Tread down. Are they just waiting for their support? So we have a boop down onto Tread, but no one there from Twisted Minds to follow. And Twisted Minds are actually going to lurk underneath. Quartz peeking. 
Couple of body shots on Naga, but nothing too scary. Still ult advantage for Twisted Minds, and Peps are just waiting for the ults. Peps are just going to save. They're going to save. They're going to wait for Kiri ult. Maybe even wait for Cage. They're going to get a pick on Lupta. They have the ult. This is the go time for Peps now. They can drop and take in this trade. Tread will get the cage as they go. Kitsune rush over top. Quartz with a high noon, but they're completely separated. It's a two-man beat. The high noon. Quartz needs something, but he can't find anything. Boot from Crispy, not in time. And Twisted Minds have this ult advantage for so long. They've had it for so long. They weren't able to clear top. They weren't able to do anything with it. And Peps just wait it out. Get their own ults. Really, really sloppy from both teams so far, honestly. Alt-wise, we're looking at Kiri ult and Barrage, very powerful. But Cage be available here for Peps. You can really cage them here, but I, I think they should win the cage fight here, Twisted Minds, if Tread forces it. It's going to be a Kitsune rush first. They can maybe just try and run out. Tread's going to get focused down. They're kind of just happy to take this. We saw on second, Peps make a very tactical decision to just wait for their ults manage the number of fights left in the game and how many of those are actually winnable based on the ult economy and they seem to make another another macro based decision here and just accept they'll lose that carry ult and now they get to push back in cage on top as well they'll mow him down twisted minds will just accept this death get a trade if they can both teams opt into sack fights to try and give themselves the best economic situation going into the last one Cage, Barrage, and High Noon available for Twisted Minds. So you can certainly drop all of those. There is a Beat Blade available. But I feel like if you if you cage the Beat Blade and then you just you have High Noon, you have Barrage, you probably should be able to deal with it. We'll see how Peps choose to take it here. We will be in last fight territory as we approach this final corner. Tread will take a lot of damage. And they'll have to take a breather. Yoram's going to have this Kitsune Rush, which should, in theory, put them over the top. And Naga's going to catch Lubta again twice. Now Lubta dies early before the fight starts. They're going to go around the corner. High noon swing onto Kennen. He's caged, but Kennen's trapped in. Never beat over the top. Kennen needs help, but there's no support. Oh, it's the support. Oh, it's overwhelming from Peps. They still lose FD God, but Barrage tries to trade for Farah. It does. But Barrage trades for Blade. Quartz and Vigi now. Crispy's going to get the touch. Tread's trying to focus him down, but he's outnumbered. He has to run away here. Johan will TP out with him. And the Barrage does its job. Loved to redeeming himself a little bit after a couple of early deaths. Shuts down what should have been the finisher for Peps. And now Zodiac is going to go Widow. They have to push into a beat. They just need a little bit of magic here. Because as long as Crispy gets this beat off, Vigi gets his carry off. There should be no way Twisted Minds can lose here. Tread's going to take so much damage. They lose Crispy actually. So no beat available. Dink from Zodial. Naga's going to finish off Quartz as well. 3v3. Zodial's still just loading damage into, into this. But Lubda is the one cleaning up. Kitsune Rush comes out now. No one else can get the touch. It was a little bit scary after Naga found that kill. He almost found the clutch, but uh, there was just too many ults on the side of on Twisted Minds to actually lose out on that one. And no completion, but a pretty decent time and distance overall for Peps. Both teams playing with a ringer and both teams making a fair amount of mistakes, I think it's fair to say. You can see them both also trying to make intelligent decisions in terms of setting up clear ult win situations. Dying in the right places. You saw Twisted Minds holding forward at the end of their defense on third now to try and get an extra ult out. Lubda getting caught. And, and honestly, when I look at some of these situations for Twisted Minds, this one is a, this one's a really interesting one. When Peps were on high ground here, this is Peps. They'll be represented by the letters P, E, P, and S. And then Twisted Minds were in the low ground here. They'll be represented by the letters TM. And when Peps were just playing slow up here, there was even a point where I think Naga died. So there was just four Peps up here. And TM still didn't push or try and take the space with their ult advantage. I feel like if Yubi's in, they're making that call. I feel like they're doing something in that time. I feel like they're not just sitting there. And I feel like this is... Obviously, they miss a certain amount of Yubi's hero pool. But I think it's the in-game leading that is really the big miss from Yubi. And you just have to feel that in that situation right there, Yubi is telling, telling them... To get that high ground back. Going to be more of a Malga Mirror. Going to be more Farah. Kiri from both sides this time too. And it's going to be Sojin from Quartz. Cast from Zodium. Tread holding quite aggressively at this choke here. We'll try and get that early damage onto Kellen. Tread's lost more health than Kellen has though. Suzu's come through and Tread can keep peeking. Has to go back now. 
Of course, the take of the high ground in the meantime has a chance from this rail. But actually just gets dinked back by Zodial. Zodial was a player who really came up, had a big sort of breakout performance in OWCS Stage 2. And I don't know if we've really seen some of the same heights in some of the Peps games we've watched so far. Obviously, some of those Peps games have been against a tough opposition. But so far, he's had Quartz number a couple of times here. We go back to holding the choke. Naga with this early barrage as well. Chance to just drop this one early on. Don't even need it. Zodio with the opening pick again. Treads getting booted further and further in. They might actually lose Treads here. They might need this barrage at the end. Kellen's going to take down another one. Naga might can look for the trade if he wants it. It's going to be optimistic. Might be better just to die. We'll see if they can get the trade back. They're trying to stagger out the Lucio here. FD got us being hunted. He's 1 HP. But he gets away with it. I don't know if that's really enough for him to go again. Tread's walking for it. Nagar is coming back with Barrage. Vigilante and Crispy both of their support ops if Peps find themselves. Oh, sorry, if Twist finds find themselves in any trouble. Tread comes slamming in. Kitsune Rush comes through. Traded now. Tread's lost the initial chunk of health, but Nagar in the back with a Barrage. Suzu's good. Quartz will deal with it. Twist's mind's ready for the threat. Tread takes so much damage coming through the choke. He kind of has to. They have to touch. It makes for space for Nagas to come in the flank with a barrage, but they're ready for it. They save for Suzu. Quartz swings away. Barrage dealt with no problem. And Twisted Minds take first point and have plenty of time on second. They get this high ground for free. And they've got all their ults except for Nakitsune Rush. So even an ult advantage to snowball second with. They're gonna try and put as much pressure on this choke as they can. We'll see where Peps choose to go. Taking high ground can be difficult. Tread's going to take a lot of damage. Suzu used on the cross. Naga playing a little bit split right now. Trying to find his way in. Looks like they're just playing to stop Cart here. Peps don't want to take the high ground fight. Naga's lurking just above them. The rest of Twisted Minds are going to drop. Leave Quartz on this high ground. Which means Quartz is uncontested except for this rocket in his face. Naga finds for pick. Look, just going to be forced back as well. And now Peps are happy to swing. Cardiac Overdrive's traded on point. And they can't win this one. Kellen has to give the space. The worst possible pick. Twisted Minds had their perfect situation. They were forcing Car. They've got their main man on the high ground to carry them. But Naga's able to turn that one around. Trying to take the high ground here. Kellen's taking so much damage. They Suzu him on. Cages will be traded for Twisted Minds. Trying to get into it. The Barrage immediately shut down. Crispy's beat. It gets no one. It's for High Noon that does all the damage. Zodial comes out on top. Quartz will be staggered out on point here. Frustratingly. And they retake with Kitsune Rush. They have, they have the High Noon advantage here, but... I think most of the time the barrage probably better in this sort of Kitsune Rush trade. Obviously there's an element of can you shut it down with the Suzu timing? Can you find it? But if you can Suzu your Farron, you might be okay. Lupta just trying to find a boop. Something annoying to help Twitter's mind take the high ground. They're going to go underneath here. Lupta a little bit split on the rotate, but we'll be okay. Twitter's mind are now just moving the car. Lupta, Lupta will touch it. Crispy will touch it. Ken will touch it. Tread will drop now. Still lurking with that barrage. They can swing with High Noon if they want, but they have to keep an eagle eye on to Naga. Who's going to go in there, takes care of the Pharaoh. The Kitsune Rush trade happens anyway. Johan was able to meet it. Now the High Noon from Quartz. He's low, but the damage is done. They're still trying to fight forward. They should just be able to overwhelm him here. You can see Naga dropping into the back line now. Pressure onto the support. Twisted Minds are desperate to try and get out of there. Nowhere to go, though. Boop onto Crispy seals his fate. They'll get Kellum here as well. Pushed all the way back to spawn. Peps remain in control. Half of the time bank they had for this second already gone. And Twitter Smiles are going to have to try and do this one with not a lot of ults. Tried a few different things now. Twitter's Minds tried going under, tried going high ground. Going to try and go high ground again. Kellen's just trying to bait it out. Tread goes to run back but cancels it. Now they're coming up. Quartz and Crispy there but Kellen's been booped down. Quartz will get caught by this one. Don't think he realised Kellen has got knocked down. So Quartz ends up staring down the entire Peps enemy team. They'll be forced back. Peps now have ult advantage. And time is running out for Twisted Minds. 
I think I prefer the fights where they're going underneath and playing through point, trying to force the drop. And then maybe they have their Farron blank mid fight. That's, I mean, that's how that's how Pep's dealt with Twisted Minds high ground hold. And I think it's more consistent if you don't have some kind of overwhelming ult. But here's the cage drop. Be in response. Everyone from Twisted Minds in the cage. But a barrage outside it from Naga. The later beat comes back for high noon. Okay. All right. All right. They use the ults. They crush them. But it was just a beat to burn through there. So Pep's ult usage, outrageously heavy for that one. They will kill Kellen and move it to last fight. Only 35 seconds left. But now, they at least have ults to work with. And Pep's want to go into spawn. They want to get ults out here. They want to stagger people. Quartz is separated. Quartz is going to get caught. Luke just desperate to save his own life, but he can't. They have all the ults except for beat coming back now to his minds. But look, they're going to go early again here. Peps want to go. Will Twisted Minds be ready? They're going to swing around with Kitsune Rush. They're not ready at all. They're not ready at all. They're going to be reset and spawn. Can anyone touch? Quartz is going for it. He's not going to make it. Quartz isn't going to make it. Can anyone go? Luke just going to try and make a move for it. No, but Naga intercepts him. And Peps played it. Peps played it so well at the end there. So well at the end there from Peps. They take care of him. And as much as we saw, I, I think it's fair to say we saw mistakes from both teams throughout that. I actually think we also saw a lot of smart decisions as well. Like Peps, Peps playing it slow on the high ground, trying to force Twister's minds to make a move on their attack. And then, and then making these intelligent decisions in spawn to make sure. Because even if they don't win that fight, you know, because that, that hold in spawn where they go with Kitsune Rush, that goes perfectly for them. Because they kill Kellen and they stop Twister's minds getting to use any of this ult advantage they have. But... Even if it doesn't work like that, they probably still get more ults out of Twisted Minds than they'd normally use in that type of fight, you know. Um, normally, Twisted Minds would probably just match Kiri ult and try and use one of the DPS ults or something like that. But it works out. I think Peps actually, yeah, Peps, it, Peps would have come back with ults for the next fight as well. So I think it was a really, really good decision by Peps. And I think that's ultimately what won Peps for series more than anything were these big, uh, these good macro decisions. I think there's still a lot of things you can look at where it's, um, you know, Yubi wasn't there. You're missing your in-game leader. You're missing a um, person who's a lot of a shot calling. So does you, would you, should your macro look worse if you're missing your main shot caller? Probably, right? Probably. You'd hope there'd be enough understanding across the team to fill in as much of these gaps as possible. But you can maybe understand some of the problems with Twisters. So Warriors is a good win for Peps, and it's their first win, I think, out of any of the big five in EMEA. Um, there is there's caveats to it, right? Obviously, Peps were without Crook as well, but I think if you were to say who's a bigger loss to their team, is it's Yubi for sure, right? It's Yubi for sure when you factor in the intangibles. I think in terms of why he wasn't available, I think he just wasn't available because Twisted Minds had another game after this that day, um, and Yubi was Yubi was there for that, so I think it was just an availability thing, uh, would be my guess, um. Obviously, looked to look very good on the Farah. I think there was a, obviously the, a couple of times on the Twisted Minds defense he got caught. But I think overall, I mean, looked as good at Farah, right? Big surprise. <laughs> but I thought he played fine. I think the problem for Lubda is the same problem. It's very similar to the Atlanta Rain problem they had in the final year of Overwatch League, where Vigilante couldn't get in over Chio. And it's not because Vigilante wasn't good. It's just that Chio was such a central part to how that team functioned. How do you bench him? Yeah, how do you bench him? Uh, similar problems we had on London, where we had when we had Hattie and Poco in Season 5. It's like, well, Poco's definitely better at the heroes he's meant to be better at. But the team's different without Hattie in. So when you have that person who becomes a central figure, you kind of need them to play every map. Um, and it can just be the nature of it. So uh, as much as it's uh, another loss for Twisted Minds against one of these top five teams... The only one I think they've beaten is Ataraxia quite early on. I think it's, it's not the end of the world for Twisted Minds. There's enough caveats on this for both teams. We can take a look at the scoreboard. This is back from the OAC, uh, sorry, for Samoa. That was quite back and forth. Trying to see if there's any standouts here, really. Kellen, 13 and 4 in that, actually. Yeah, very impressive, considering how close and back and forth this series was. And Pep's actually, overall, worse KDs, slightly worse damage. Probably count themselves quite lucky. To win that one, uh, the C9 definitely helped, right? And then as we make our way onto Hollywood, we can see the balance shift back the other way. We see suddenly 12 deaths for Quartz, 13 deaths for Lubda. How often did those Twisted Minds fights start with Quartz getting picked, with Lubda getting picked? 
just starting on the back foot. Meanwhile, again, we see no surprises that there's a, been a big difference as well. Kellen dying nine times versus Treads five times. Maybe the most impressive one. Zodio won 13 8. Thought Zodio had a really good game. I thought Naga had a really good game. A couple of the blades didn't work out, but more of the barrages did work out in a night. He got a really good pick on the Hollywood second defense retake. I think that was a massive one when he picked Quartz off the high ground. <laughs> so, yeah, so I guess it, what really comes down to is who is the player of the match. And I think. I mean, I mean, I mean, going go in one of two directions. I'm either going for Naga or I'm going for Zodio. I feel like Zodio was rock solid. His high noons were really good. Am I actually gonna be? Am I gonna be Zodio pilled? Maybe I'm Zodio pilled. I feel like the high noons were so good. I think he had a huge amount of, a uh, huge amount of value outside of that as well. Whenever you want, whenever you play these hit scans, there's always an element of who can get the opening picks, who just wins these duels at the right times. And I felt like Zodio won most of them. I felt like he was very hard to punish for the most part. And it felt like, we don't often say this, but it felt like a very quiet performance from Quartz. Even when Twisted Minds have been losing in the past, and they've lost to say, like, do you take their loss against SSG? Do you take their loss against Ents? Sure, they lost those games, but oh my god, Quartz was an absolute monster on those games. But today, a relatively subdued performance from Quartz. Um, and I think Zodio got the better of him, and I don't think you often get to say that when you have this hit scan matchup and you're playing against Twisted Minds. So I think Zodio player of the match. So congratulations to Zodio, congratulations to Peps, a good win. And for everyone on YouTube, this will be the end. I will see you in the next one. There'll be more VODs coming from this last week of Face It action, so stay tuned, and thank you very much for watching.